checking out here another Chinese drone with a very affordable price and this one is called the Holy Stone HS100. I picked this up directly from Amazon via the Prime service and I paid only about $250 and that was after a $30 coupon that it is currently available for this particular device. Now a lot of you guys may say, Jay, well it is still a little bit expensive for what it is. It is considered a Chinese budget drone and normally we are accustomed to seeing prices like $100, $150. But this one here guys really goes a little bit above and beyond in terms of how easy it is to use, how reliable it is, and just how much fun it is, especially if you are a beginner. This drone is 100% recommended guys, and I mean this thing doesn't have any glitches, it doesn't have any problems. It comes right out of the box, ready to go, and to calibrate it, it is also super simple. I have seen other... I would say a lot more expensive drone, smart drones that are very hard to calibrate and they can frustrate anybody out there. This one here guys, it is super, super easy. I'm telling you, even a 10 year old can operate this even though it is recommended 16 plus, but again, it is so easy that pretty much anybody out there can fly it. Other than this, it has amazing specs like GPS, it has one key return feature, follow me mode, intelligent battery, altitude hold mode, headless mode, HD camera, a 9-axis uh, gyro, and a 4-channel transmitter. So again, very impressive for the price. On the side here of the box, we have more detailed information about this product, or you can simply click on the link below and check it out directly. On the back side here, it is giving us a little bit more information about the camera. It is equipped with a 720p HD Wi-Fi camera, but now keep in mind it is Wi-Fi. So after, I would say, 120 meters or so, you're going to start losing connection with the camera. But the good news is that it has a built-in SD card. So it'll continue recording for you even though you lost signal between your smartphone and the transmitter because, again, it is connected via Wi-Fi. Then the battery here is a 7.4 volt, 2500 milliamps, able to give you about 12 and 15 minutes. Now the charging time is absolutely ridiculous guys, but now a little trick is that, well, when I use my fast charger from uh, Samsung, it was um, charging a little bit faster than the three hours that they're giving us here. It was charging in about almost two hours. So that was uh, great, but now keep in mind that this is a LiPo battery, so fast charging it is usually not recommended. It's actually very risky, but I decided to do it and nothing happened. The battery didn't even warm up or anything, but it did charge a lot faster. This is just informational. You can try it, but at your own risk. So anyways, guys, let's go ahead and check here the contents inside of the box. And the first thing you find here is some extra landing gears because the drone already comes with some already pre-installed, as you can tell right here. But it came with some extra ones, definitely appreciated. And then we have a little notebook. Now, don't ask me what the notebook is for, but it was included for some reason. Um, and then we have here the tools and some uh, extra parts as well. We have a um, SD card reader inside of this little bag. So again, very appreciated. Um, then the next thing you find here is going to be the uh, prop guards. Now this is recommended if you guys are, I would say beginners or you just simply want to learn how this drone operates and feel comfortable with it, then just go ahead and install it. Now myself, I feel like I'm more towards the expert side, so I just decided not to put them on. They uh, can add some extra weight to the drone and the battery will deplete a little bit faster. So the next thing we find here is the battery. Again, this is the 2500 million battery. It has a uh, smart uh, button here that you click it. It'll give you the battery status, uh, including how much is charged. It comes with four dots. Uh, each one is about 25%, so it'll tell you briefly how much you have of battery power, which is really cool. Uh, the next thing we find here is going to be, of course, the transmitter. A very easy to operate transmitter. It just has a few buttons. We're going to be talking about this in just a second. And then finally, here we have the drone, guys, okay? Um, we can see here on the bottom side, we have the HD camera, 720p. And it does move up and down, but it doesn't have a true gimbal on here. So when you're flying around and it is a little bit windy, where the drone is fighting with the wind thanks to the GPS uh, position hold mode, then yes, it'll look a little bit uh, shaky when recording, but it still it records very nicely according to the price here. Uh, the next thing we have is some four um, LED lights. We have two on the front side here. Uh, they are white, and then we have two on the back side. They are kind of like purple looking. And then we have the four motors and the props don't come installed, but the props are here right underneath the box. So I almost forgot to mention guys that inside of the box, we also have the manuals, which are very easy to follow. 
um, the translation between you know Chinese and English was done very well so you would not have any problems reading this thing whatsoever and yes so this drone as you guys can tell came with pretty much everything you need to get going right away one of the best beginner drones that I've seen again guys in quite a while so with this being said let me go ahead and set everything aside and now let's talk a little bit more in details about the drone so now that we got this drone all set up and ready to go I want to give you the information that you need to get this thing up and running the first thing is that you must charge the battery completely before you take off that way you ensure that you get your 15 minutes at least and to check the status all you need to do is hold and press this button right here and it'll give you the status right now I have about 75 to 80 percent you will charge it here with this micro usb port and to turn it off you would just hold and press it for a few seconds keep in mind that this will also serve as a power key for your drone the second thing you must do because this drone comes almost completely assembled including here the landing gears and the camera is just install the propellers the propellers that come labeled with A and B, you must uh, make sure that you match it with the uh, correct motor. So it'll have the B logo on the motor itself. And then of course match it here with the propeller. And then it comes with three separate pieces. One of them is a washer. Then you have a spacer and then the screw. So to get this correctly done, all you need to do is go ahead and place the propeller first of all on the motor itself. Then quickly after this, you will go ahead and insert one of the washers and then you will go ahead and insert the uh, spacer. Make sure that it does align perfectly well with the hole on the shaft for the motor. And then after this, you will just insert the screw, the Phillips screw with the Phillips screwdriver included inside of the box. And that's pretty much all you have to do. But now don't forget the final cap that goes on the very top protecting uh, the whole assembly here on the propeller. So after this, you're all set to go. You do the same repeated steps here on the A side and the other B side, and you should be all set to go. Then quickly after this, you go back here to your drone on the back side and you ensure that your camera has here the SD card right here on the back side. It comes with the SD card reader. And finally, you insert the battery. Now keep in mind that you can press the power key by accident and turn it on. You don't wanna do that with the transmitter turned off. So make sure that you push it here from the sides and this is all you have to do. Now the drone is all set to go. So the next thing here is going to be the transmitter. Very easy to use guys. Again, this is a super simple drone. So nothing here is, uh, I would say dramatic. So on the front side, we have the return key and it works absolutely as intended. Then we have the power key to turn on the transmitter. Then we find here the auto landing and the auto takeoff button. Um, on the top here, we find the headless mode key. We also have the follow me key. So this works guys and to be honest with you, it works okay but it's not super accurate i kind of felt a little bit um i would say on the unsafe side thinking that it was going to hit an object or that something was going to happen where you know i was going to lose the drone or something so i just decided not to use this feature um it does work but again i was a little bit skeptical about it because um there was a point where i stopped and the drone just kept on going so for that reason i disabled it and never turned it on again and then here we find the wheel for the speed control you can increase it by going all the way to the right or decrease it by going all the way to the left. Um, here on the middle side, even though it is hard to see, we have this little bracket for your cell phone so that way you can hold it. And what I did is that I pulled it all the way out here from the top and then I moved it here towards me. And after this, you go ahead and insert your phone and you should be all set to go. Finally, here on the right side of the remote, we have the camera uh, angle wheel. Okay, this will of course tilt the camera um, according to your likes. Then we have a dedicated photo key and a dedicated recording key and that's pretty much all we have here for the remote. Um, on the bottom side here we have a charging port. It is a rechargeable battery which again is really appreciated. The only little downside about this system is the fact that when you're connecting to the Wi-Fi for your FPV, it doesn't connect to the transmitter it connects to the drone so again after about 120 meters you will lose the connection between the camera and your cell phone but again keep in mind that it has its own sd card so you will always be recording on here and it does also record directly on your cell phone but in case it gets cut off well at least you know you have the footage directly here from the camera so that's about it when it comes here to the uh, transmitter. So now we're gonna be talking about how to pair it and how to calibrate the compass, which is really easy. 
So the first thing you want to do after turning on here the transmitter and the drone afterwards is go ahead and pair both of them together. So to do this, you just move here the left lever all the way up and then towards the bottom. And then now we can see some different lights on here. And then quickly after this, the Wi-Fi will be activated on the drone. So now is a good time to come back here to your smartphone. You go into your Wi-Fi settings here. So let me go ahead and close this out. Let's go here into Wi-Fi and then you will find the one for this particular transmitter. It is called the Holy Stone FPV. You click on it. It doesn't have a password, so that's great. And in no time, you will be connected. So right now, everything is set to go and the drone actually has set up here a GPS um, signal right now because the lights are no longer blinking. So in case you guys didn't know, when they are blinking the way you just saw them before, that means that it is attempting to uh, grab a GPS signal. So this is amazing that inside of the house it was able to do that. So now here we are basically all set to go to go ahead and take off. All we have to do now is go ahead and download this application. It is called the HS GPS Pro. Okay, you go ahead and open this application and it says right now checking device and it gives us here four different options we have gallery which is going to give you everything that you have recorded on here on the top we have the firmware version so maybe in the future we can upgrade this as well then it says support it has learn help and then enter device in this case we're going to choose to enter device so now here on the application we can appreciate right here that it's giving us already the battery status for the transmitter and also the drone itself if I click on these three lines, it'll give me here the uh, settings for the distance. Now, if you guys are a beginner, you want to go ahead and turn this on and it'll set it up to about 30 meters and also the altitude to 30 meters and the return altitude to 25 meters. This is again beginner's mode. But in my case, I uh, decided to just go ahead and take it to the max because again, I see myself as a um, expert um, pilot, I would say. So for that reason, I didn't need the beginner mode. So now go ahead and save those settings. And now here we have the um, buttons for the camera, the recording, um, the follow me mode, the uh, auto takeoff, and all those great features. So we can do them directly here from the remote, but me personally, I'd rather use the one here on the transmitter itself. Uh, then after this, everything on top here is just informational. We got the GPS. Um, we also have here the uh, VR uh, glasses settings. So you can insert these in a VR and view it uh, directly from your glasses, okay, which is really cool. And other than that, everything else is uh, very straightforward. Right now, it's giving me here the information that it is ready to fly. But since we are elevated a little bit more than usual here with my desk, it is uh, giving me this little warning on the bottom side. So again, this is all normal. But now, to calibrate the compass, it is also very easy. All we need to do is move these two levers to the middle side on the top. And now you will notice how the lights are blinking a little bit differently. And then here it is giving us the information on how to uh, calibrate this. So the first thing you must do is go ahead and place it on a flat uh, surface, preferably grass. Then you will lift it and move it clockwise. Okay, until you come back to the same position you were before. So now you can see how the purple lights on the back are solid. And now to calibrate the rest, you would just point it up likewise and then spin it until the light remains solid. So right now you guys can see that both lights are solid and that means that we have completed the calibration for the compass. After this guys, once you have calibrated the compass, once you have a GPS positioning hold and the camera is working, you are all set to go. So now this thing on the air guys works absolutely great. The auto takeoff is really easy to use and I would say it does elevate about, I'm going to use feet, I would say about maybe uh, four, four or five feet up in the air. So make sure that when you uh, use that button that you have enough clearance to take off the high. If not, you can just activate the motors uh, directly from the levers by moving them towards the bottom side, both of them together, and that'll activate the propellers and you can do it manually as well. All right, so now after getting everything completed and calibrated, I went ahead and flew this thing on a windy day. And let me tell you guys that, well, it didn't do bad in the sense that this thing kept the GPS positioning very, very nicely, even though the wind was trying to drag it. 
Now, when you're trying to record at the same time, that's when the problem occurs because this thing does not have a gimbal and that's the whole purpose of having one is to stabilize the video. But now this thing, when it gets pushed to the sides and it's trying to fight the wind, the camera is not going to record as great regardless of how great the day is. It could be a nice sunny day and the recording is going to look very jumpy and you can barely see what's on the image because of the fact that, well, it is jumpy and this thing doesn't have optical image stabilization either. So yes, I would definitely suggest that you guys fly this on a nice smooth day and you will thank me later. Talking about the GPS, this thing has amazing qualities when it comes to the GPS guys. There was zero lag or zero drag should I say, um, where the positioning was left at. Okay, so that means that when you're flying, you let go of the transmitter, it should stay right there in the same position and this thing did it quite well. Also the return to home worked absolutely fantastic guys I mean I pressed the button and it came down exactly to where I took it off from so the GPS is super accurate on this thing and that's one of the main highlights okay because we're not paying too much for this drone and having a very sensitive GPS is super important especially when you're trying to learn on something that is not very expensive and this is a main concern for a lot of people out there guys that when they buy drones they want to learn first they don't want to go ahead and spend eleven or fifteen hundred dollars on a drone that they will crash in maybe a few hours they want to try it with something that they feel comfortable with but sometimes when you get them too cheap then there's another problem because the reliability is also in question so this one here is super great i would say is the perfect drone again for any beginner out there the motors were holding very nicely as well. They are quiet, uh, even though they are brushed and they are gear powered. So it is not a direct drive. It has a gear and then the gear connects to the shaft where the props go installed. And that's how this thing operates for the most part. And there are many tutorials out there on how to replace the motors as well. So when it comes to support, this thing has tremendous support as well. So you know, I think that in my opinion, guys, it has all the bells and whistles that you need in order to get started. And even if you know how to fly it, but you don't want to spend all that money on a drone, this thing will provide fun to pretty much anybody out there. So the recording of the camera, well, it wasn't the best to be honest with you guys. It is not super detailed and it can look grainy because it has a, I would say somewhat cheap sensor. It is only 720p and I'm assuming that this thing is either two megapixels or five megapixels. So it is not a super high end camera. But you can't deny the fact that comparing it to other budget drones, this thing can do quite decent uh, like you're seeing right now here. So all in all, I have to give this thing a 9.5 out of a 10. And the reason I don't give it a 10 out of a 10 is because maybe I wish that it had a brushless system here that would have made it a lot better and more reliable. And the fact that the camera doesn't record the way I want to. Other than these two minor issues, this thing is definitely a great drone. With this being said guys, I think that we have completed here the unboxing and the review of the Holy Stone HS100. Thank you for purchasing your new 360 Skyview video drone. This is the first in a series of videos to get you acquainted with your drone. We'll have you up and flying in no time. In this video, we're going to take a look at the drone, its parts, and how you put everything together. Let's begin. In the box, you have the drone body itself, four propeller guards, two landing gear feet, the HD camera, phone mount, the remote, four replacement propellers, the battery, and its charger. Out of the box, your drone comes mostly assembled. To fully assemble the drone, snap each of the propeller guards into this corresponding slot at the end of each arm. Make sure that the guard isn't snugly so it will properly protect your propeller blade. Next, we need to flip the drone over and attach the camera and the landing gear legs. First, the camera plugs into the camera port here. And once connected, you can take the camera and slide it into the slot on the underside of the drone. With the camera attached, you can then attach the leg. The rear of the leg mounts into the rear of the drone. Then you gently twist, and the front snaps right in. Before you can fly your drone, you have to charge your battery. To charge the battery, plug the included charging adapter into the port on the side of the battery and then you connect the other end into any USB power source, like what comes with your phone. Now that the rest of the drone is assembled, you can install the battery. To install the battery, push it into the battery slot on the rear of the drone and make sure it clicks so you know that it's mounted securely. Now that we have the drone put together, let's have a look at the remote. 
On the remote, you have two thumbsticks to control the drone, two large face buttons, four small face buttons, and six buttons on the shoulders and back, as well as two antenna and a mount for your cell phone. Let's go over the controls. The left thumbstick controls altitude, while the right thumbstick controls lateral movement. The bottom left large face button turns the remote on and off, and the bottom right face button controls the GPS follow mode. The two small face buttons on the left of the remote control speed from low, medium to high, and the right two buttons control the trim of the drone. The shoulder buttons are headless mode, one key return, GPS surround mode, and your compass calibration button. On the underside, you have one key takeoff and one key landing. Your remote takes four AA batteries, which are not included in the package. To install the batteries into the remote, use the included screwdriver to loosen the screw on the battery cover. With the screw off, you can slide the battery cover off and insert your four AA batteries. The marking is inside the battery compartment will tell you how to properly insert the batteries. When you're done, reinstall the battery cover into the remote and screw it in securely. We hope you enjoyed this video.